want to look tired. You don't look tired and the flow looks good, Mark. Don't worry. Um, Flow's gone. <laughs> good morning. Um, what is something perhaps that you learned about Clayton Kershaw as his pitching coach versus something, you know, that you didn't know perhaps when you were the bullpen coach? Um, I, you know, honestly, I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I think I had a pretty good feel for the type of worker. And, and I don't mean necessarily like how hard he works, but just kind of his routine, uh, how he goes about his, his days in between starts, um, you know, how he kind of lets his guard down uh, in between starts. And then obviously, like, you know, it's game time, uh, you know, today from the moment he arrives. Um, I, you know, I don't think there's anything necessarily new. You know, you know, our – I guess relationship is, is evolving, you know, currently, and I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for him, you know, his in-game adjustments, um, things that he wants to be talked about or, or maybe said to him. Um, maybe those are things that I'm learning, like things that how he wants to be cued or, you know, simple reminders in the moment that, you know, you know, are, are very simple, but, you know, not, but maybe provide enough impact for if he needs to make adjustments. So I think it's more of some of the in-game type stuff that I wasn't, necessarily a privy to just obviously being in the bullpen versus being in the dugout right he had said after his last outing um continuously this year when he's when he's hit 92 93 94 that he he knew it was in there and it was frustrating because it wasn't uh being seen but this year for whatever reason the velocity is back uh what can what do you make of that I, you know i i think i i read some of the same things i, I think he you know He's put all, it's not about the work, but I think he's done a lot of things to um, access, you know, say the velocity that, you know, has always been there, um, you know, and over time, you know, with, you know, as we get older and he puts more miles on his body, you know, pitching, like things start, you know, the body starts changing, things start tightening, things start loosening. Uh, um, and so I think he was able to, you know, do some different things and, and kind of attack it, you know, from a 360 degree approach uh, to unlock some of the, the body to allow his arm to, to deliver the velocity that, you know, he was accustomed to. Um, and, and I don't think that's anything that's unusual um, for veteran pitchers, especially guys who've been around for, you know, a decade uh, to go out and, and have to kind of, um, you know, not not learn something new, but kind of figure out, you know, where their body is at, you know, in their 30s than it is at their young 20s. And, um, you know, he spent a lot of time trying to um, figure out the right steps and the right things to do. And, and right now he's seeing the dividends, um, you know, in the velocity and, and, and really the command too. I, I think, you know, you take away – the, the San Francisco start, um, but going back into summer camp, you you see him being able to command both sides of the plate, you know, much more effectively. Um, and then I think that's something that he, you know, he had also lost too. So there was a velocity component, but it was also a little bit of the command of both sides. You guys are going to have some decisions to make coming up. I know Gonsolin was optioned yesterday. It makes sense. He's not going to be able to do anything for a few days anyway. But with Alex coming back and the way that Gonsolin and May and um, have performed, um, I realize it's a good problem to have, but where do you see that going when Alex does come back? Yeah, good question. Um, don't know. I mean, I, I think it's something we discuss internally. Uh, it seems like we're discussing some somehow every day at some point, whether it be a lengthy one or, or just a quick short one. Um, you know, I, I'm just, you know, I think we as a group are very happy with the way Tony and, and Dustin have, you know, basically answered, answered the bell. Um, you know, D-May getting thrown into that first start uh, for a guy that was getting sent down out of, out of summer camp. And, and now he looks like he's, you know, he's definitely earned his, his, his way into this rotation for the time being. And I think the challenge to Tony was given that his, his slow start in summer camp, um, we always had told him, Hey, like you're going to be a part of this. We just don't know when and and how. And the challenge to him was basically go out and 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 basically you know compete, compete to win a job, show us that you deserve uh, to be here. And he has. And uh, you know I, I think that's a good problem for us to have. It's um, 
you know, it's not necessarily the easiest thing for the player who's performed. Um, but that's part of also just, you know, I guess growing up in the game a little bit, there's just some things that, you know, you have to go through that not, not necessarily fair, but um, it's just part of it. But Tony's is taking it like a pro, um, you know, and we, we need to keep him stretched out as a starter. So it, this made the right, you know, from a logical standpoint, it was the right decision. And uh, we expect him back and, and really to provide a lot of impact for this ball club when his time comes again. Appreciate it, Mark. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Mark. Morning. Morning. Um, I was curious what the organization's pitching strategy was as far as handling of the starters and the pitch counts. Stripling and Kershaw in a couple of different starts have gone 91 pitches, 92 pitches, respectively. At least in the first month of the season, was there a conscious effort to limit the starts of your starters? No, I, I don't think so. You know, um, you know, for me, I, I think – you know, limiting them would be more in the 60 to 75 range. Um, you know, I think Clayton, I don't think it was any secret just based on summer camp. There was no limits on him and, and especially Strip and, and Kirsch and Woody before he went down. I mean, those guys were in pretty good positions uh, to kind of hit the ground running. And that was something we had communicated to them all during the shutdown. Um, you know, Kirsch went into the seventh inning at his last summer camp start. I think his limits have been more because he had that setback with his back and just trying to get him back going. Um, and, and Strip, for, from his standpoint, has pitched well, and it just got into a situation where we felt like as the lineup was turning over again, um, you know, most of his times have been – that seemed like a logical spot to, to insert a reliever. So it's not necessarily has been a limiting thing. It's been more just – um, you know, I guess more of a strategy thing and, and how to, where's the best spot to interject, um, you know, the first guy out of the bullpen. As far as Walker Bueller goes, uh, do you feel like he's getting closer to be the Walker Bueller that he was after the first month of last season? And do you see any similarities between his first five starts last year and the first five of this season, first four or five? Um, I think he's getting closer. I, you know, I, I don't think uh, he'll tell you probably the same thing that he's not exactly where he wants to be. But I do think we've been seeing progress over the last couple starts. Uh, you know, first we started seeing the velocity tick up a couple starts ago. I think last start we saw the command tick up. Um, you know, the breaking ball stuff, uh, the slider and the curveball haven't been there for him yet. Um, and so that's kind of handcuffed him in, in some situations where he hasn't, you know, he's either wanted to throw it and it hasn't got quite the bite that we needed. And, you know, he's, he's paid the, the price for it. Or it's just has been balls, uh, which then leads himself, you know, leads right back to kind of more of a hard pitch. Um, but I, I think things have been trending in the right direction. I mean, slow start. Uh, I do see some similarities to last year, but I think there's some things that are different. But, the, you know, not working ahead, you know, in his first few outings wasn't, didn't help his cause. Uh, but I think now we're starting to see things, you know, you know, slowly like kind of piece by piece put together. And, and Walker's, you know, got a guy who, you know, has some moving parts. Um, and I don't necessarily mean necessarily from a delivery standpoint, but there's a lot of things where, to get him to where he feels, um, you know, confident in everything. And with a guy who's, you know, featuring, you know, five, five plus pitches sometimes to lock all the men at one time is, uh, you know, those are the games where you see the 15, 16 strikeout game. But I do think we're seeing progress and the goal for, for obviously walkers to get them right, uh, but obviously get them right for the stretch run. So uh, as long as we keep seeing, uh, you know, steps in the right direction, I think we're, we're encouraged. And, and then obviously Walker will go out and, and compete and, and gives us, you know, uh, a great opportunity to win every ball game that he's in. So we, we still feel very good about that, but he's progressing, um, you know, not where I think everybody would like it to be right now, but I, I still think we feel very good about where he's at. Thank you. Hey, Mark, um, just wondering, we're talking about the spots, you know, Wolf coming back, you know, Gonsolin. Why not just go to a six-man rotation when you have extra roster spots in this short season? Hello. Oh, there we go. You hear me now? Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, just just wondering, we're talking about Gonsolin and, and uh, you know, Wood coming back and 
the number of spots and the rotation. Why, why aren't teams, why aren't you guys and other teams just not going to six man rotation when you have extra roster spots? You know, I, I, fair question. I mean, I, I think during this stretch of 17, you know, that was the reason for, uh, you know, dropping Tony in there for two starts is to kind of go with the six man rotation. Um, you know, but then after we get out of this uh, 17 game stretch, we got some off days that actually is going to, you know, limit the ability to do that. You know, we're guys, if, if we went with, even with our five man rotation, um, you know, guys are going to get pushed in six, you know, five, six days off. Um, you know, we want to keep Kirsch uh, and Walker and those guys kind of somewhat of a normal schedule. But uh, I mean, that was basically some of the decisions we didn't feel that we needed to necessarily go to a six man rotation at the time being. Um, does it make sense if, if, if your schedule dictates it, like the last 17 games? I think it does. Um, but we felt pretty good about the five guys we have and then taking the extra, extra, extra arms in the bullpen. And we're talking about, uh, you know, Kershaw's velocity. What does a mile um, per hour and a half, what does that do for him? I mean, like practically speaking, how, how, how does that impact his, you know, his pitching in, in any way? Uh, I mean, I mean – Throwing harder is better, but, you know, how does that impact him? Yeah, yeah, hard, hard sometimes is good. Um, you know, I, I think it just gives him some margin for error. I mean, the ball's, you know, when he's throwing, you know, with that extra velocity, um, you know, A, it gives him some margin for error in the zone. You know, he does have some – still has the life on the ball through the zone. He still has kind of that rise that gets through the zone. Um, and then when you add a couple, you know, a mile, two miles on it, um, it just gives him a little bit more ump. I, but I also think that it allows a slider to stay – keep, you know, the velocity and the break on it. I mean, it's – obviously the slider for him is, is a short one. It's good. You know, it's, it's hard and it's short, and it basically just misses barrels. Um, so I, I think that's the other – you know, component. Now, there's the velocity the same on the slider, even when his velocity is down is, you know, sometimes it is, but I don't think the movement uh, and the sharpness of the bite uh, is the same. So I, I think there's, that's kind of the extra benefit or the added benefit is yes, it gives him some room on his fastball. Uh, but I think it also helps him lock in the arm speed helps him lock in the, the his really good slider. And uh, we've seen uh, Victor Gonzalez a couple times, just uh, what have you seen from him going back to training camp? Yeah, I mean, you know, for Victor right now, it's it's really, you know, with his stuff and his movement, you know, with the fastball and the slider, uh, it, it's really just how can we keep him on the plate consistently? You know, I think where he, he started off slow last night is, you know, he was just getting off the plate. Uh, and that's really, you know, for our standpoint, you know, what gives some hitters a chance. Um, you know, I think if, if he throws it over the plate, you know, and just allows his normal run on his fastball and then the, and the sweep on his slider, I think we feel pretty good that the ball is going to be put on the ground or there's going to be some swing and miss. And I think what we saw in the second inning was the guy was, you know, kind of settled back in. Um, and I think when he maintains his delivery and kind of the, the normal cadence of his delivery uh, without trying to do too much, um, we see him over the plate and, you know, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of ground balls, a lot of uncomfortable at bats and uh, Victor's going to help us. Um, you know, do we don't know how or when or, or, or what the situation is, but uh, we feel very confident uh, in what he can do. And I think for him, it's just the more he gets out there, I think the more comfortable he be, he'll be. And so it won't be such a, um, you know, over, over, uh, maybe some overthrowing from the initial initial pitches. But Victor looks great, and, and uh, he's got a lot of – obviously got a high ceiling and, and a lot of upside. Thank you. Mark, uh, the starters uh, in general have been going shorter this year than last year. Uh, is, do you think that's – Well, now I got you. Okay. Um, the starters have been going shorter this year than, uh, than at this point last year, uh, this many games through. And uh, I'm just wondering if that's because you've got a younger rotation, um, a shorter ramp up, uh, or is it just performance related? Um, I, I, it broke up. I think you said uh, starts have been short. Is that a performance? Um... Short ramp up. Or oh, gotcha. uh, the fact that you've got younger starters than you had last year. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, there's probably every situation, meaning every game is probably a different decision. Um, 
you know, I, I guess from my perspective, like when we go into starts, I think we're like shooting, you know, for like normal starts, which is like 90 to 100. I, I don't think we're going to push guys over 100 right now. Um, just because I don't think we, we need to with the extra arms in the bullpen. Um, you know, I guess some of the times we look at it more from, from a game standpoint, like how many, how many frames had they pitched? You know, Tony getting in the seventh the other day. And, um, you know, so I, you know, it was for him, his pitch count was down, but we felt like a seven, you know, seven innings was, was good, good enough. Uh, and he did his job. And I, I think that's a little bit more of, you know, maybe the mentality is like, what is that guy's job on that given day? And, and if we feel like that he's done his job, um, you know, that's probably when we'll decide to make a decision. Like, you know, I felt awful, uh, you know, maybe awful is too, too strong of a word of it. You know, I mean, we're definitely, we're conscious of D May the other day in, in Anaheim, um, you know, four and two thirds, like, you know, we had a, you know, a decent lead at the time, but obviously against that team, uh, we felt like, you know, we didn't want the situation to unravel where, you know, he lost the next guy, then he's facing, you know, Otani and, 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 you know, where things can snowball really quickly. Um, you know, we felt like on that day, it was a hot day. And so that was like more of a game specific decision, uh, you know, to, to flip it right there. And again, it was a t standpoint where we felt like, you know, knowing who we had in our bullpen and, you know, what was the right place to interject somebody, we felt like that was the time. And so, you know, so again, it's, it's more some necessarily like a, it's not necessarily a preconceived, like we're going to keep our starters short from the, uh, from the ramp up standpoint. It's more of, you know, what's the job on that day? Has he done it? And who's next up? And where do we feel like that entry point uh, best suits that person uh, to keep, keep the ball, mo uh, keep, you know, kind of momentum on our favor and keep it rolling. And you mentioned May in that game. Um, uh, is it tougher to kind of balance that, a balancing act and not burning out the bullpen when you've got so many young starters and they're not giving you six, seven eight innings the way uh, like the Maedas and Ryus might have done a year ago? Yeah, no, I mean, it's right now it's a delicate, yeah, it, there is definitely a delicate balance, you know, uh, you know, being able to, you know, try to bank, so to speak, you know, six innings, you know, give or take uh, an out here or there um, is not always the case, you know, because they are young and you don't know from a consistency standpoint, um, you know, you get Dustin in San Diego and, and that how lights out that was. And like, he was pretty efficient or even when it first started in San Francisco, he just hadn't got, you know, built up as much as we would have liked. Uh, or is it more of like a grind where it was in Houston? And, and even the other day in Anaheim, it was a grind. Like he didn't have his cutter working, uh, you know, very good offensive team, uh, hot day. So like that was more of a decision of, you know, trying to put all those, you know, factors in, into the decision. Um, but it does make it more challenging because, you know, starts like last night, starts like on Monday, um, do put a lot of strain and taxes your bullpen, even if you do have extra arms because you're actually going to carry a lot of outs. So, um, you know, I, I think now as we start getting through this stretch, um, you know, we'll start seeing, you know, hopefully some guys pushing into that 100 mark, um, you know, when it's appropriate. Um, but again, it's, it's going to be a game by game decision based on, you know, what's going on in the game. Thanks, Mark. Hey, Mark, can you hear me? Do you have any sense of how uh, hitters' lack of in-game access to video this season has affected your, your pitching staff, I guess specifically your starters? And are, are there ways they have or, or can take advantage of that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, to be honest, it goes both ways. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously I've heard rumblings of the ability not to kind of see where pitches are and, you know, have a good feel of maybe, you know, the movement of what a guy's throwing versus what it says on paper or what they've seen in film. Um, and, and so I do think like there, they have been, um, yeah, there has been like an impact from that standpoint, uh, but it also is from a pitching standpoint, like we have no access either. So it's really hard to see, like, you know, we're relying on our eyes from a dugout, you know, as the pitch in or out, we can kind of tell some vertical stuff, you know, if it's, if it's up, if it's down, uh, but it's really hard to say, you know, 
is is the cutter moving is the slaughter moving like is there any you know how's the you know the sink on a two seamer like and so you know we're flying blind a little bit there too and really you know trusting what our catchers uh and and what the feel of the pitcher is at that time and, and you know i'd say a majority of the time like we get pretty good reports but at other times like they're in the heat of the moment so it's hard for them to completely like you know be impartial to to what's going on so it, the in-game video is uh, has made it a little bit more challenging from that standpoint. And, you know, it's trying to make end game adjustments uh, without being able to see just the standard TV feed, um, you know, has been limiting. And it is something that is definitely, you know, forced guys to adjust, you know, coaching staff and, and players both. Do you think you can correct for it over the rest of the season? Or, you know, being four weeks in, have you found ways to sort of course correct in games? Or do you think it's just sort of this is you're going to have to take some occasional L's with your understanding? Um, I think it's both, you know, it, it's definitely, you know, getting, I guess, our pitchers and our catchers both like to make sure they're, you know, you know, hypersensitive to what's going on in the game and, and being able to, you know, be intuitive, like read and react, you know, I, I mean, a little bit of it's, you know, uh, I don't want to say it's old school, but there is a little bit of read and react like, hey, if something's not working, we're trying to figure out why it's not working in the moment, we got to make an adjustment if it's switching from the game plan. And I thought that's what, like, you know, like Tony did the other day. I thought Sammy um, and, um, and Tony, uh, or Austin and, and Tony, uh, sorry for the nickname, uh, you know, did a really good job. Like, his split, you know, he was throwing it, but it wasn't as good as it was, you know, the previous start that we had seen. Uh, but then all of a sudden, in that fourth, fourth inning, like, they realized, like, hey, his fastball had gone to a different level and really leaned on it. And I think those are the adjustments uh, that we need to see out of our battery. And it's, you know, it's great if we see it. Uh, you know, from the dugout, but it's 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 way better when they see it in the moment because then they can make those adjustments a lot quicker than we can. We have to wait until maybe an inning's over, you know, if the catcher's hitting and, you know, they got a lot of things going through their head. But if they both are seeing it in between the lines, that, that's where I think the impact is is huge. Gotcha. And that was Austin who suggested that in that moment the other day? I think it was just, you know, I, I don't know exactly. I think it was just really Austin being like, wow, that was different. And, and then all of a sudden – they just were like synced up, you know, and it's, those are the moments that, you know, when sometimes it happens in the first, but a lot of times it doesn't happen until the third or fourth where something clicks uh, and they both know it. And they just, you know, started going, I mean, and that one at bat against, uh, I don't know if it was a, uh, against long um, or somebody where it was just like, he just let it rip. And it was where, you know, it was like 96, 96, 97, 98. And it was like, just by the guy, you know, and he knew it was coming and he'd let it have it. So, uh, you know, that's when it's awesome. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody.